Welcome to Bentec SM's Sheet Metal Design Software video demonstration. In this video, we'll show an example of laying out sheet metal designs using Bentec SM. Since we're showing a tutorial, some of the examples shown will be demonstrated in an instructional manner. There are some faster ways to produce your parts that we will learn as you get to know the Bentec product. We will begin by laying out the points used to define our base flange. In order to do this, we will begin by using our Create tab and our Point button to lay out our points. We will use the system defined 0, 0 coordinate as our base point for our new part. Going off this base point, we want a part that is going to be 8 inches wide and 6 inches deep. In order to do this, we will start out by putting our first point 8 inches to the right of this new point. Selecting the incremental version, we will use an 8 in our X, a 0 in our Y, and as you can see that creates a point 8 inches to the right of our cursor. Selecting our origin point, we will select this new point. Our third point will be 6 inches above the last point created. We will change our values to a 6 in our Y field creating a point 6 inches above our cursor. Selecting the point that we created just a moment ago, we will now place our new point. We will then duplicate that point using our origin point. We now have the four corners of our base flange. We will now connect each of these four points using lines to define this flange. Selecting the line button, we will use the two points and continuous method of creating lines. Starting at our origin point, we will connect our first point we created, the second point, the third point, and then back to the origin point. As you can see, we now have four lines defining our base flange. We now need to define this flange so the system recognizes it and we can view it in other forms besides 2D. We will do this by using the Sheet Bends tab, going to Definition, Defining our material, selecting Select Flange, and then using our cursor to select any of the four lines of this flange. Once we do that, our flange list button has turned green, signifying that that flange has been defined. The next step in our project is going to be adding two 90 degree bends on either side of our base flange. We will start this by using our Add bud Bend button. Once our Add New Bend panel displays, we will use the 90 degree bend angle the 5 inch flange height. We will be sure that our direction is in the up position and we will use the 0.3 inside bend radius from our material library. We now need to select a line we want to add a bend to. We will start by adding a bend to our left side of our base flange. We can do this by simply clicking on the leftmost line of this flange. It will prompt us to now name this flange. Selecting OK, it now places it. We now need to add our right side flange by following the same parameters. Once both flanges are now created, we can see our progress so far in our shaded display. Going back to our 2D display, the next thing we need to do is add our internal features. We will start out with our base flange. Selecting our flange list, we will go to the base flange, highlighting 
this base flange so it is now active for us to work on. First thing we need to do is place a square hole in this flange. We will go to create tab. We need to add a point at which to place our square hole. In this case we are going to use the incremental version once again. We are going to place a hole two inches to the right of our base point and three inches above our base point. Selecting the far left lower corner of our base flange we will place our new point for our hole. We now can select our hole button, select our square hole method, changing the width to a two inch wide square, selecting this last point we created and we have now placed our square hole. The second part of this internal feature for the base flange is going to be a cutout. We will start this cutout by selecting a couple points to place our cutout. Our first point is going to be two inches to the right of the center of our square. Our second point will be three inches below our last point we created. The third point will be two inches to the right of that point. Our final point will be three inches above this last point we created. We now have the four points defining our cutout. We now need to define this flange further by outlining our cutout. We will use the line method once again to do so. Our cutout is now outlined. We need to add a fillet in the bottom right hand corner of this cutout. We will do this by selecting arc, the fillet method. We will auto trim the lines. This will use a 0.5 radius. We will select the bottom line of our cutout and then the far right line of our cutout and as you can see our fillet has been created trimming out all the excess lines that we no longer need. We have now created the features for our base flange. As you can see our flange list button is orange meaning that our flange has been edited since we last created it. We now need to redefine this flange so our system recognizes it. We will go back to sheet metal bends to do this definition. Once that is redefined, our flange list button returns to the green color. We now need to create a singular circle hole on our left flange. We will begin by selecting the left flange. Once the left flange is selected, we can begin by creating a point for our hole. In this case, we are going to use the entity center method which will put a point at the center of any line that we happen to cross. In this case we're going to use the far left line of our left flange. Clicking on that line will set that point. Our circle will be two inches to the center of that point. We will use the incremental version, incremental method to set that point. Once the point is created, we can make our hole. We now have the internal features of our left flange. We must now redefine that flange. Now moving on to our right side flange we will create the, a rectangular hole in that flange. 
We will do this by creating a point for that hole once again. Starting out at the bottom right hand corner of that flange, we replace our new point. We can then go back to our hole, select the rectangle, and create our hole dimensions. We then can place our new hole at the last point we created. That completes the left, the right side flange and the right side flange internal features. We now need to redefine that flange All of our flanges are now complete. We can view our finished product by hitting the shaded button and seeing what we have created. One of the last things we can do with our creation is to add dimensions for further use of this drawing. We will do this by creating a dimension our creation, create dimension panel pops up and gives us the different methods we have for creating dimensions. We'll start out by using the horizontal. We will select the far left top corner of our drawing, selecting a point there. Our next point will be the far right top corner. Selecting a point there, we now have our measurement in a text form that we can set anywhere we like. We can also do this at the bottom of each flange. And at the top of our base flange. Showing all of our horizontal measurements. We will next use the vertical measurement tab to put in some of those measurements. We'll start here on the left flange moving on to the right flange. Our we can also use our linear method to define our cutout. Selecting the two top points of that cutout, it gives us a measurement for that. Using these measurements you can further create your product in your shop, making it easier to lay everything out.